Greetings and welcome to this special edition of The Greatest Talk Show. I'm Mark the Arcturian. This episode from the top secret files of The Greatest Talk Show, The Hawaiian Cross Earthquake Phenomena. Good God, Marco, could you be any more dramatic? Oh, I'm just getting started. And as such, let's familiarize ourselves with the sophisticated tool we'll be using during the better part of this film, our old friend, the USGS Earthquake Map. And, as I promised in the title, ten minutes from now you will never look at a USGS Earthquake Map the same way ever again. My second promise is this will remain unlike any other training video you'll ever see in your life. As we go along, you'll find this film falls into the little-known genre known as infotainment. I like to follow the philosophy of the late great playwright George Bernard Shaw. When telling them the truth, you'd better make them laugh or they'll kill you. During the course of this film, I will answer these two headlines and correct these two. Unless otherwise specified, all the slides you'll be seeing are on my standard USGS setting, world map, one day, magnitude 2.5 and up, oldest to the bottom, newest to the top. I don't bother with 03s, 12s, 21s. Your floor would shake more if you dropped a gallon of milk. Notice the opening slide, last week 6.5 in Vanuatu, you say that how you want to say it, and the Hawaiian Cross earthquake phenomena. Yes, thank you. Merely states that an earthquake on one side of the Ring of Fire is mirrored directly opposite Hawaii within 24 hours. Mark the Arcturian. Heard of him. Very clever fellow. Now, not all earthquakes, and definitely not mirrored in intensity. Mark the Arcturian, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Who just said that? I heard you. Keep watching. More shall be revealed, Grasshopper. In that they are in successive order, from oldest on the bottom, newest to the top, let's just go around the ring of fire at some successive quakes. Puerto Rico, up to Alaska, Japan, back up to Alaska. Next page. Alaska, Puerto Rico, East Timor, Chile, and then back over to Fiji. Around the ring of fire in apparent random succession. But I assure you, they are anything but random. There's nothing random in a chaos universe. That was barely two weeks ago, August 24th, 2018. Now applying the Hawaiian cross formula. Let's look at the same day with the earthquakes in proper relation to each other. An earthquake on one side of the ring of fire is mirrored directly opposite Hawaii within 24 hours. All those orange dots are within the same 24 hour period. In that it is on auto-update every one minute, occasionally, in between slides, we get some bright red dots, like last week's 7.1 in New Caledonia. And if you're a USGS quake map watcher, we're kind of addicted to red dots. Now what had me instantly concerned with this, if you look where Hawaii is and apply the formulae, that earthquake is pointed smack dab at the Cascadia subduction zone. And we have precedence exactly one week prior to that. Our opening slide, the 6.5 in Vanuatu. I understand the locals say Von Washu, like a sneeze. Von Washu! But again, you say it how you want to say it. Call it Van Halen if you want. Which, four hours later, pings Hawaii. And then, last week, 6.2, up band in Oregon, off the coast, smack dab in the bottom of the Juan de Fuca plate, straight across. Total time, 11 hours, 59 minutes. Every time you see three quakes in a row like this, I want you to hear this sound. And 50 extra bonus points if you identify your age and tell me what major network used to use this sound. NBC. There is a five-way Hawaiian cross, perfect straight line. Now before I cover how the Hawaiian cross earthquake formula <laughs> came about, 
I'm going to answer the top two questions first. No and no. Uh, what were the questions, Marco? No, I did not discover the Hawaiian cross phenomena. In the same way Einstein did not discover relativity, it already existed. Thank you, Albert. And even if you buy the fairy tale, Christopher Columbus did not discover the United States of America. And just ask any of the natives that already lived here. What do you mean, dude? We've been living here for hundreds of years. In the same sense, Mark the Arturian did not discover the Hawaiian cross earthquake phenomena. It already existed. I merely uncovered it. Capiche? For which, by the way, I fully expect a Nobel Prize. There's a little known factoid of Christopher Columbus's four ships, only the Nina, Pinta, and the Santa Maria ever achieved landfall. Unfortunately, his fourth ship sailed off the side of the earth. And no, I'm not a geologist. Sure, you're already glad about that. But I'm not just another pretty face on a radio. If you've seen any of my 50 films, this being my 50th, on YouTube, if you'd seen any, you'd know I'm a professor of heliophysics out of Boulder, Colorado. Yes, you could put it that way. I'd like to remind you that 10 minutes from now, you used to think we orbited the sun like this. But everyone knows the sun is a star, hurtling, shooting through the Milky Way galaxy at immense speed. As a professor of heliophysics, I can tell you the sun's velocity is currently calculated at approximately 134 miles per second, or, listen, 482,000 miles an hour. Nearly a half a million miles an hour we're traveling, which means right now, this instant, this exact second, we're about a thousand miles away from where I started this sentence. Translates to over 11 and a half million miles a day you travel awake or asleep or four billion miles per year on mothership Earth. I can tell you all that. And since we're dispelling old myths and learning new things today, this is what our solar system would look like if viewed perhaps from the USS Arcturus. Half a million miles an hour. I could watch this all day. Here you come. Wave. There you go. Man, oh man. How's that for infotainment? As for how the Hawaiian cross formula came about? Oh, well, that's really quite simple. I'm a drummer. Professional drummer. Band, orchestra, marching band, high school, and a big hair band rock drummer from the 60s and 70s. I was playing drums with the Youngbloods when I was 14. Yes, that's them. It's all I can play before I trigger the YouTube copyright alarm. Doesn't make any sense, huh? Okay. Any mechanics watching? Oh, a couple? Good. Let's see. Who's ever changed a tire? Oh, good, a lot of us. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, then you would know. You put on the new tire, and you hand-tighten the lug nuts, and then you take the tire iron, and you go around, and you tighten the lug nuts. Uh-uh. Oh? No. No. Oh. Again, if there's any drummers out there, you would know that to tighten your drum head, you take your little drum key, and you go around, and you tighten the tension rods, right? Uh-uh. Nope. Boy, tough crowd today. Well, how do you do it then? Really? You want to phone a friend? Is this your final answer? Okay. That's right, I heard a lot of you. Crisscrossies. Diagonals. Why? Equalization of pressure. And what is the Pacific Ocean? It's a big giant drum head. Opposite sides. Earth is balanced, yin yang. It must equalize pressure. This is nothing new. Basic Arcturian quantum philosophy. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction and so forth. I'm gonna take a moment and give a shout out to the USGS, especially Ross Stein. We interrupt this special report to bring you this special report. 
Hello everyone with the Hawaiian Cross Report, September 13, 2018. I'm Mark Hakalugi. Beginning on the left side of our map, right above Africa, you'll see a red dot of 4.3 in Rabar, Iran. Look right across Hawaii and give me Puerto Rico for a hundred, Alex. <coughs> Cha-ching! Just to the right of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, is another orange dot slightly lower which will ping slightly higher on the other side above Rabar, Iran. It's that sensitive. Draw it in. Cha-ching! South America, wide open to Japan. Oklahoma, where the quake NATO comes sweeping down the plain, pings Indonesia. Day in, day out. Which explains why there ain't no fracking quakes in Oklahoma. They're all pings from Indonesia. Check it out. Just to the right of Oklahoma, that one in the South Central U.S. is South Carolina, of all places, which is slightly lower than Oklahoma, which pings slightly higher than Indonesia on the other side. Cha-ching! You see any others? One right up and down. Perfect six-way Hawaiian cross day. For the Hawaiian Cross Report, I'm Mark Hakalugi. It's especially Ross Stein. And if you're at the USGS, you know who Ross Stein is. And I hope I've managed to get this into your hands, Ross. Because your video demo from your talk at Stanford on silk stockings and falling apples, which I believe references Newton, is right in line with the Hawaiian Cross phenomenon. And you're rather an infotainer yourself. Let's watch as Ross Stein clearly demonstrates equalization of pressure using three stone slabs and a rubber band. Ross, tell them what you're going to do. Okay, who's going first? First click, second, or third? First. You just shout it out. Who's going second? Who's going third? Could be a trick question, you never know. Okay, so here we go. gets interesting really fast, right? <laughs> I mean, you were really good when you said the first one goes first, and then your, your, your whole predictions went to hell. And that's because things get very interesting. Once the first one goes, it tensions the second one. Once the second one goes, it tensions the third one, but it also removes the tension on the first guy so he can go again. Beautiful, Ross, beautiful. Again, a big thanks to the USGS for your hard work, your monitoring all your slides and your never-ending source of material for my YouTube films. Now, Ross, here's what I want you to do. That was great pulling exercise. What I want you to do is reverse it and push them. Marco, you can't push your rubber band. That's right. Oh, uh, have no fear. Mark the Arturian is here. So I want you to replace the rubber bands with spring-loaded titanium rods. These should work just fine. Metal toilet paper roll holders. Glue those in between the slabs and push instead of pull. See what you get. And it is my greatest desire, Ross, that we've already spoken and we're collaborating on this project together and we can share the Nobel Prize. So let's get back to the Pacific plate as a big giant drum head. And let's stick with what we know longitude and latitude now these are invisible lines they're not actually painted on the earth there's also another set of invisible lines occasionally referred to as ley lines and I don't know if these maps are correct but they do show everything interconnected to everything else I'm down for that knee bone connected to the ankle bone and look at that convergence spot right off the coast of Florida because it's also on the global map right off the coast of Florida. And look off the western coast of the United States. That looks about like Hawaii. Let's go back to our original perfect Hawaiian cross. So before I overlay some invisible ley lines, now that you're aware of the Hawaiian cross phenomena, Does anybody see any potential other Hawaiian crosses? Did you say this one? Excellent! See, you're getting good at this. Okay, let's go back to the plain slide, please. 
And let's overlay some invisible ley lines as if Hawaii were the North Pole of longitude and latitude. Okay, so these aren't really longitude and latitude lines, nor ley lines, but they do give the picture of things being connected. As in Rothstein's demo, his plates were connected by rubber bands. Well, plates aren't actually connected by rubber bands, which is also why not every quake is mirrored and not in intensity, because it may take a few pulls from brick one for brick three to move, his middle brick being Hawaii. So imagine this is a giant web of guitar strings or piano strings. And to borrow an old joke, just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. And it's a well-known fact if you're in a room with a piano and you're playing an E chord on a guitar across the room, the E string on the piano across the room will start to reverberate. Similarly, they've taken two atoms from the same molecule and separated them by hundreds of miles. And what happens to one happens to the other. It's a symbiotic relationship. So the Hawaiian Cross earthquake phenomena is really nothing more than tugging invisible strings. You could call it a string theory. <laughs> and let's put on our original crisscross there. Uh, Von Washu. Washu to abandon. And there's the other one. Any others? Perfect. Any others? Do you see any others? Potential. That's right. Any more? What about Africa? I don't know. That one looks a little high. So let's go back to our opening slide and let's see what happens if I move Africa to the other side of the map. And note that one in Africa is thousands of miles from any known fault line. Do we have something? I'd say we do. Perfect four-way cross. How about this one? You see any crisscrossies? Oh, come on. They're all lit up for you. Bingo. Cha-ching. Give me Ecuador. We're 600, Alex. I do not make earthquake predictions. I'm not big on predictions. I make very precise earthquake calculations. I post the first slide with the projected quake zone on Facebook, internet time date stamped, hours before slide two showing an earthquake smack dab in the projected quake zone. And in dozens of calculations, I've never been wrong. I've never missed. Can you say that? You will be able to say that when you use Mark the Arturian's Hawaiian Cross Earthquake Formula. <music> Hawaiian Cross Imminent by 724.16 in Chile, plus or minus 100 miles. And did I hit it? <laughs> Spot on and in dozens of calculations. I've never missed. Now, before we wrap up this ever so brief primer on the Hawaiian Cross earthquake phenomena, I promise to answer these two headlines and correct two others, but let's stick with this one. What's causing the huge spike in earthquakes in Oklahoma? Oh, yeah, the fracking boom. Yeah, pitchforks and torches. Mm. Oklahoma, where the quake NATO comes sweeping down the plane. See? Fracking just caused another 4.6. <laughs> Not only in Oklahoma, but in Texas. Oh, wait a minute. Fracking is not causing earthquakes. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Oh, wastewater injection wells. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Nope, 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 nope. There ain't no fracking quakes in Oklahoma. Oklahoma pings Indonesia day in, day out. Applying the Hawaiian Cross formula will explain the uptick in Oklahoma earthquakes. Oh, look, a brief stop at the San Andreas Fault, and then right over to Oklahoma. This explains why the huge spike in earthquakes in Oklahoma. Simple. It's merely the Hawaiian Cross Earthquake Phenomena.
Now back to headline number one. Ecuador and Japan. Are they related? First thing I'm going to do is zoom in on the date. April 18th, 2016. I shouldn't have to tell any of you what that is the 110th anniversary of only the most famous earthquake in the world, April 18th, 1906. So are Japan and Ecuador related? Well, the USGS says no. But I don't think I need to tell you Mark the Arturian's answer to that question. But let's be sure. Now in the beginning of the film, when I promised to answer this headline, I had no idea that during the course of making this movie, we'd had such a repeat performance. A 6-6 in Japan and a 6-2 in Ecuador last week. And I just happened to have the slides of all the quakes leading up to those two quakes down in the South Sandwich Islands. Let's go right across. Four way. South America, paw four way. It's slightly curved as if in the curvature of the earth. And there she blows the 6-6 in Japan perfect four-way but let's move the South Sandwich Islands over to the other side of the map a five-way Panama pinged from Japan we're playing a little ping-pong here perfect Hawaiian cross within 24 hours in Panama for six one hour after Panama Ecuador cha-ching now, if there are any sticklers out there, like me, the 6-6 in Japan was September 5th, 2018, at 11 a.m. The quake in Ecuador was September 6th, at 7 p.m. at night. But Mark the Arturian, that's 32 hours. That doesn't fit your 24-hour Hawaiian cross formulae. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha! Oh, 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 oh. Ha-ha-ha! Ha-ha! Oh, but it does! Japan had a 4-6 precursor mere hours prior to the... 6 6 and 10 successive aftershocks, mag 4 and 5, leading up to the Ecuadorian quake. Again, sometimes it takes 10 tugs on brick 1 to get brick 3 to move. Second from the top is from mere 4 hours prior to the Ecuadorian quake, which 11 minutes later pings Hawaii. <coughs> 2 hours 13 minutes later hits Japan. Let's watch this in action. Pop quiz. From what you've just seen, are you starting to see that by applying the Hawaiian cross formulae that Japan and Ecuador quakes are definitely related? That's what I thought you'd say. Last but not least, I promise to correct these two headlines. Quake moved Japan 8 feet. Shifted Earth's axis. <coughs> Nepal earthquake moved whole city of Kathmandu 10 feet. <coughs> Okay, that's the second most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. That the infamous 2011 9.3 in Japan, which decimated Fukushima, and you should really watch Mark the Arturian's movie on Fukushima, by the way. This headline is 180 degrees backwards. Two postulates can never be proven against each other. And if you're postulating, you better make sure you're starting on the right shoe, or the opposite one will appear to be true. This giant rock we live on, this third rock from the sun, is exactly that, a big giant rock. It's impossible that a little 9.3 shifted the entire Earth 8 feet. That's backwards. On the other hand, an 8-foot shift, listen, an 8-foot shift in the Earth would definitely produce a 9.3. And the same with Kathmandu. Both headlines corrected. And that about wraps up our basic primer on the Hawaiian Cross earthquake phenomena. You want to do your thing? Go ahead. Thank you. I hope you're watching at the USGS. I managed to get this into your hands, and it's one of my greatest desires that after watching this film, that you'll invite me for a more extended lecture, especially at Stanford, where Ross Stein gave his lecture. My Nobel Prize should be forthcoming soon after that. That's how I think it should go. And you'll find my contact info in just moments at the end of this film. A quick note, all the straight lines we've been mapping are only on a map. And unless you're a flat earther, 
the Hawaiian cross doesn't follow the curvature of the earth, so therefore it must go straight through the earth. During an extended lecture, I will cover how, by using ultra-high-tech, sophisticated 3D earthquake imaging software, mine is called PaintShop, we will map the Hawaiian crosses through the substrata. Now, I don't actually have access to the 3D earthquake imaging software, but you do. And I can't wait to see what some of you are going to do with this technology. For instance, Indonesia, 73.9 kilometers. Let's put that on our 3D map, which pings Hawaii. No, they do not always ping Hawaii. Sometimes it's a pass-through. This one does actually ping Hawaii and then hits Kansas, which is 50 miles away from Oklahoma, at a relatively shallow 5 kilometers, forming a perfect Hawaiian cross. Let's put that on a 3D map and find out where it passes through the substrata. As you can see, it's about 11 kilometers deep. Number two in Peru, coming in at a whopping 609.5 kilometers put that on our 3D map. Also pinged Hawaii this time. Pings right over to Japan at a much shallower 47.2 kilometers. Perfect Hawaiian cross. Let's mark that in the substrata. A little bit higher. Roughly 7 kilometers deep. What you'll find is they all intersected the same zone directly under Hawaii. How big is that zone? The Hawaiian Islands stretch one and a half thousand miles wide across the Pacific, dwarfed really when placed in an 8,000 mile wide Pacific Ocean. But I suspect that the intersection of all the Hawaiian crosses is an area much smaller than that. That's your homework. Here's a hint. The location appears to be on the western side of the Hawaiian archipelago. I have been meaning to mention, as you saw in some of my double slides of before and after earthquake projection zones, this formula never misses. However, it's been my experience that the swath of the projected quake zone is too wide and the magnitude of the ping too uncertain to make this an earthquake early detection warning system. Yet. If you only take away one thing from this video, Keep first and foremost in your mind that when the big one hits, and we all know it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when California falls in the water, just remember, it's Andrea's fault. I'd say it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. About now, hopefully you're saying, okay, Mark the Arturian, this is either the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life or it's the greatest breakthrough in earthquake patterning in recorded human history. I'm going with the latter, but you decide. For The Greatest Talk Show, I'm Mark D. Arturian. Thanks so much for watching. This has been an Earth 2018 Special Report. I'm Mark D. Arturian. Doom and Gloom is next over most of these stations. I'd say it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Hey Jack, come here for a sec. Yeah, this Mark the Arturian fella might have something here. And no, I don't know Jack.